Welcome to Learning Lua. In today's tutorial, we're going to look at using loops inside the Lua scripting language. We have three main tools available to us for doing loops inside the Lua scripting language. The first one is the for loop. The for loop will repeat a segment of code a specific number of times. The general structure for the loop is that you need to have some kind of variable counter that this does not need to be declared or pre-declared before starting your for loop. You need your starting number, your ending number, and then optionally you can have a step number which controls whether or not the number counts by twos, counts by threes, counts by negative numbers. So in our example to begin with, I've created a, the most generic, simple for loop available. I'm using the letter i for my variable. That's going to keep track of what iteration we are in for the for loop. So this loop is going to store the count from 1 to 10 in the variable i. And then we'll just simply print out i as it functions. As you can see down here in my output, we have outputted from 1 to 10 utilizing that loop. If you're interested in doing a step, in this particular example I've used 2 as my step, so it's going to count by 2 starting with 1, and then output 1, 3, 5, and 7, and ending with 9. The for loop is st supposed to stop at 10, since 10 is not part of that step, it, and 11 would be too high, it does not output 11 as part of our loop. But what if I want to count backwards, you may ask. Well, if you want to count backwards, you just simply place a negative value on your loop for the step. So in this case, we're going to start, our starting number is 10, the ending number will be 0, and we're going to count backwards in negative 2. So the output is 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, and 0. Loops do not have to have predefined numbers. If you need to if you're not sure when you're writing your software what the ending or the start number is, you can always pass it as a variable. So in this particular case, I've got i going from 0 to count. Now I have predefined count as the value of 10, but that can of course be defined anywhere. Again, we're counting it by 2s and outputting 0 through 10. So an example of a situation like that, in a game that I recently was working on, I needed to be able to remove shots that had been fired from the system to free up memory and so that they didn't build up inside the environment. So I created a simple for loop that went through and looked at the table, shot table, you know, real original name there, and looked at if each shot and to see if it had been removed from memory yet. And I use that by using the, the parameter my name to the shot table and setting that to nil if it had been already removed. So using this for loop, I can go from one to however many shots had been fired inside the game and go through and clear out any shots that had not been cleared out since the last iteration. This made it very easy to clean up the environment quick and easy and the, the for loop took care of everything in that situation. The second type of loop is the while loop. A while loop will continue looping until a condition is met. This is a very straightforward use of a loop. If the condition is false initially, the loop will never be run. So here we have a while loop. I have created two variables, temp and i. Temp is initially set to the value of true, so it is a Boolean variable, and i will initialize as 1. While temp is equal to true, it's going to perform the loop. So print and output the loop and what iteration of that loop that it's on, as well as after it prints that, it will add 1 to the value of i, and if i is reaches the value of 10, then we're going to change temp equal to false. So that will be our exit from the loop. It is critical anytime you are using a while or a repeat loop that you eventually resolve the condition. The condition at some point needs to be met so that you can exit it, otherwise you're going to be in an infinite loop and your program will eventually crash. So in this particular case, we're outputting our values 1 through 9, just like in previously. Because the value that we're looking for is 10, if i ever reaches the value of 10, it will be 
set to false so our account does not go from 1 to 10 it goes from 1 to 9 because of how we have this structure if I wanted it to count from 1 to 10 this line would need right now as you can see it's in an infinite loop this would need to go to here and now because the i increment it happens after the check we can reach the value of 10. A variation of this while loop is that we don't actually need to check and see if temp is equal to true or false. The basis of doing any kind of condition check whether it's an if then a while or a repeat is evaluating the comparison to see if it is true. Since temp is already set to true all we need to do is check the variable temp so while temp or while it's true do the following loop and exact same situation as before the only variation is that we've simplified our check so in this particular case we are checking to see is temp equal to true and if it is then it will perform the loop the final type of loop is the repeat repeat works similar to the while you are checking for a condition to tell it to check and see if the loop should continue the difference between a repeat loop and a while loop is that the repeat loop will always run at least one time it will always execute at least one time whereas the while loop may not ever execute if the condition is already met or not met so repeat will always run at least one time while may not run at all just as with our while loop I've got temp set equal to true and I is set equal to 1 we'll start our loop with the keyword repeat we'll output I I equals 1 and if I reaches 10 then change temp to false and it's going to run until temp is equal to true well temp is already equal to true in this particular case so the conditions already met in this case it ran one time and then the condition was met it was no longer needed we could change this to a false situation in this case doing an until not temp or in other words until it is false do the loop in this case it ran one through ten or one through nine we have a lot more tutorials and lessons forthcoming if you'd like to follow what's happening you can follow us on twitter at dr brian burton or Facebook at Burton's Media Group, or follow us on our website, burtonsmediagroup.com. If you'd like notification through YouTube, hit the like or subscribe button. 